Welcome to the ISS in virtual reality. We are coming up on the space station, looking over and coming underneath the docking port and grabbing a hold. And this is the bottom of the station, and this is the most forward section, and we are moving aft. The Oculus Rift uh, has a free program, Mission ISS, and that's what we're looking at. It is a wonderful program. Uh, it is not a game. It's not a shoot 'em up You don't experience points or anything like that. There are a few missions you can do. Uh, two of them are really easy, and, and, and one is very, very challenging. And that's using the Canadian arm uh, to dock um, a spacecraft. And it is uh, a lot of fun. Uh, but I would imagine that uh, most people would enjoy this experience immensely, but probably wouldn't think much of it after they've experienced it once. But for those of you who are uh, dreaming about space and even becoming an astronaut, you're going to love this and probably spend a lot of time. This is the very first space vehicle to go, the Zarya. And uh, that was the the first one to go into space to build a space station then the Zvezda uh, is uh, came along uh, a couple missions after that uh, they did the Russian Zarya first and then the unity module and then uh, which is node one and then this uh, Zvezda let's uh, grab a hold of the station one of the great things about this uh, program is you get to view the station it's almost like you know it's it, most of us will never get to go in space but boy this is this is pretty close to uh what we can what the experience would be like i would i would imagine uh doing this in virtual reality here's the milky way galaxy what beautiful views and vistas we have uh doing a, a spacewalk well i want to give you uh an introduction to the station and uh, kind of go through a tour as we climb up to the upper side of the space station and start looking forward. This is the very aft end of the space station and now we're looking forward. It looks like there's a Soyuz capsule right there dead ahead uh, coming out. And let's push off and get a kind of a grander view of the station from uh, back a little bit and see how that goes. So as we uh, kind of move ourselves away and get a overall view of everything, we can look in all different directions and get an idea of the where we are with the space station. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure if that's a Soyuz capsule, but and then if we if you can see the blue dot, uh, you can then see the Unity module, the uh, Tranquility, and down below the Coppola. We'll go uh, to speak more about that. That's the zero one. Uh, I'm sorry, the zero trust, and then over to the right would be your starboard one trust, and then uh, additional trusses going further out and then that would be the port one truss to the to the left and then out to I think truss port truss six or P6 all right so let's kind of move down back in for a closer view this whole aft section of the station is the Russian segments and then where we see the trusses coming off that's probably about mid station there's the uh, tranquility and the cupola below and a number of things to give us wonderful virtual reality views. Look into the port. 
side of our spacecraft. We'll, we'll consider the space, uh, the space station as a spacecraft and looking to the starboard section. In fact, all spacecraft are, are, are um, use nomenclature like any ship, uh, earthbound ship or, or spacecraft, and even the space station does. So this is now the most forward section of the ISS. And that module off to the right is Columbus. That's the European module. And this one to the left is the Japanese experimental module uh, and uh, referred to as GEM. Well, I refer to it as GEM, and then uh, the Japanese have another mo storage module above it. Uh, I'm flipping my views around. Uh, this is uh, what, this is the uh, Destiny, and then Node 2. Node 2 is referred to as Harmony, and then looking at the GEM again in the storage portion of GEM, and back over to Columbus. Uh, looking down in the uh, the No Two uh, Unity, we are uh, let's kind of head back down. Uh, and we're still over the top of the station. With the furry first forward part, we'll grab a hold here. Two or Unity, and looking from this direction, we can see the zero truss and then the starboard truss one and the port truss one uh, we can we've been kind of flying around with the jetpack but you can actually move along using the handles on the outside of the station to work our way back to the quest nodule Now, we try to use the jet pack as little as possible. In fact, I think on a real space walk, uh, most of the time they never use a jet pack. Uh, I know that there was, um, there are space walks that were done with the space shuttle and probably with station where they did use jet packs away from the station. Uh, but for the most part, most all of the uh, spacewalks are done uh, tethered and and moving along with these handles this is quest it's the airlock so what we do now is we're going to take you inside um, but before we do most astronauts and i think you'll find this too will probably uh, take a moment for a last view Let's kind of push off here and take a last view. So awesome, so uh, scenic and uh, breathtaking. And in we go. So this is uh, inside the station. We're in quest which is the earlock and we would have to uh, remove our suit and leave them here as we go through and begin the tour of the inside of the station so here we are in the space station let's tour around a little bit take a look we'll come out of the earlock after we got our space suit off and can freely move around with comfortable clothes we have a toggle uh, on the controller that will flip us around 30 degrees it's quite uh, handy uh, to get to get yourself situated just the way you want and you can look uh, we're in the unity node that was the first node and we can pass forward now we're heading towards the front of the station or forward would be the proper terminology until we come all the way through the station to the very further section and then right in front of us would be the docking uh, port if we opened that up uh, we'd be going outside the docking port if you remember from the beginning of the video is where the space shuttle would uh, would dock to uh, but that's how the video began uh, going towards that now we're heading now out of the 
out of that node 2, the Harmony node, into the European space uh, module known as Columbus. And that's where a lot of medical um, experiments are, go on. And then flipping around and going straight out of Columbus, you go straight across. If you remember from the outside, you go straight across over into the Japanese experimental module or GEM. Right above uh, our heads here, you go into uh, the Japanese uh, storage module. And uh, I'm sorry, and I didn't uh, actually take a view up that way, but we've got these uh, port windows that are quite nice uh, uh, that they put these in here. You can take a look outside. That rack of uh, right out there is a rack for experiments to exposure to space. I'm not quite sure which experiments are done. That's always easy to look up. But it's fun to play around with things in the station and see how they go. And just grab the hold of that where that uh, upper module is. But it takes a little while, but you get used to moving around. When I first started in virtual reality on the station, I kept flying into things and wasn't too accustomed but before you know it you you get used to using the controllers and the toggles and you can maneuver your way through the station quite quickly just like an astronaut would to zero uh, gravity and we just moved aft now and that's the midpoint of the station and we're going to head over to the port side into tranquility tranquility is where we have uh, a lot of the personal hygiene type of things like uh, taking care of your health this is a, re a resistance exerciser kind of like a weightlifting device I can use two hands to flip myself completely upside down and then look down into the cupola now the, the, the cupola is on the bottom of the space station so we kind of flip ourselves and orient ourselves upside down sometimes you forget uh, which orientation you are and you uh, when you come out of the cupola, you forget which way you're supposed to be going. Uh, but it's got wonderful scenic views, beautiful, uh, relaxing place for astronauts to come. This corner here is the very forward corner of the cupola. So that is actually facing dead forward of the spacecraft, even though we're uh, midway out. That is um, to, the, to the left there, looking... Uh, looking out we saw that storage module and there's the Canadian arm there's the storage module I was talking about for some reason uh, in our program we're not able to get into that storage module it's blocked off so that's kind of unfortunate but uh, that's one of the places where all the it's like a closet the astronauts refer to it as their closet but yeah, one of the missions that you're able to do is to operate these controls for the Canadian arm. It's quite um, challenging the, the, uh, to say the least. It is difficult. Um, I think my problem is I try too hard, try to envision how each of the elbows are working and I don't think you're supposed to do that. I think you're supposed to keep your eye on the ball and just move and, and uh, let, the, let the arm do its thing. But uh, I've gone in there a few times and only been able to dock the well, spacecraft with the Canadian Worm twice. But I've, I've got to tell you, I've tried several times in frustration um, to get those two successful times. Now, as we come out of Cupola, you can see that we are kind of upside down. And, uh, <laughs> and But what's the difference? You're in the space station, it doesn't matter which is right up. All, all the... Uh, all the walls are, are squared off so uh, you, you know you can orient yourself that's the outhouse there uh, taking care of business and then the treadmill over to the right so like I said this is kind of your personal hygiene center your way of good health keeping your muscles up in space uh, as if you're uh, you got to keep that going so you don't lose muscle mass and and, and all that you need muscle tone for your legs and arms and body and torso and all that so
and then we move back into the uh, section where the food is, the, the water and food and kitchen area and places to heat up the food and then looking forward now to the US uh, module destiny. But if I push back off of this, I can see where we have to the right the heating elements and then this door here I'm grabbing hold of the furthest aft is actually a segment for uh, the Russian segments uh, that we explored outside but for some reason this program doesn't let us get into it from the inside which is unfortunate because that door should always be open and it is and uh, the Russian astronauts are in those quarters and and all the astronauts work together as a crew and so uh, going into the US segment here uh, we see that is uh, some backup for Canadian arm um, help and experimental boosts and then back into the uh, Harmony module. The Harmony module has uh, the crew quarters. I went past this many times without realizing they were crew quarters. They don't look like they're big enough for much of anything but um, you can point and, and click and this is the uh, inside of the crew quarters and uh, although it's located on the ceiling because the the uh, floor is by my feet and the ceiling in the crew quarters is so by that's my head. Uh, Scott tell uh, feel like Kelly Scott Kelly is telling us about the crew quarters are much bigger uh, they're more like a telephone booth <laughs> quite small as far as crew, uh, quarters go but much bigger than they appear on the wall because you got the the full canister curvature of the canister in there and it's a lot deeper than you think but uh, yeah it's interesting for four crew members can stay there and, and a few others have to stay somewhere else and, the, and then the, in the Russian segment which is far aft uh, they have their own quarters back there uh, I love just using two hands, grabbing hold of the handles, and I can align myself in any direction I need. And when you get used to it, you can come through quite rapidly, to be honest with you. Fly right through. And it doesn't take long to get good at it. So hopefully you enjoyed this little tour of the station. That's a very aft section. Oh, too bad the, the Russian segment isn't open to us. Hopefully maybe in the, sometime in the future they'll open it up. But... Uh, You'll certainly, it's a free program, you'll certainly enjoy this one. Give it a try and we'll catch you next time.